Childhood obesity is a growing problem in North Carolina. 42% of school children 5 to 11 years old and 48% of children 12 to 18 are overweight or obese. But even children who are at a healthy weight have poor nutrition and are inactive. More than one-third of children eat one or fewer servings of fruit per day, and one in three eats one or fewer servings of vegetables per day. Two out of three drink at least one sugar-sweetened drink per day. Over half do not get the recommended amount of physical activity. Medical research strongly supports the idea that childhood and adolescent obesity in America is in epidemic proportions. We have to do something. We have, we have to change the way we're doing things now or we're going to lose children. It is time for communities to work together to fight back. Part of the solution to this growing epidemic begins at the school level. Children that haven't had the opportunity to learn about food choices or children that haven't had the opportunity to learn about how important exercise is, a good place to get that is at school. We've got to look at what we can do at school that is best for that child's health, for all the children at that school. It is real critical that we start very early in teaching our students good nutrition. Students spend the majority of their day at school and school-related activities. In order to make schools healthy places for students to learn and grow, the federal government has mandated that every school system write and implement a local wellness policy. These policies are intended to improve the environment for children in school as it relates to nutrition and physical activity. They must set guidelines for nutrition education, physical activity, and all foods available during the school day. When we looked at developing the wellness policy, there were specific areas that were actually mandated that we had to address. Part of the wellness policy was that anything in the school had to meet the 35-10-35 guidelines. 35% uh, or less fat, 10% or less fat, saturated fat, or 35% or less sugar. As we developed that policy, we looked at those to see what was the best of the best that we could do to help influence the health of our children. As a former principal and as the folks on the committee realize that good nutrition goes hand in hand with good learning. North Carolina has nutrition standards for all foods sold in elementary school cafeterias. There are also standards regulating vending machines in all schools. The Healthy Active Children Policy, set by the State Board of Education, requires 30 minutes of physical activity each school day for all students in kindergarten through eighth grade. Some school districts adopt a proactive approach, using their local wellness policy to improve their students, teachers, and community's health. They are encouraged to meet and go beyond recommendations and standards already set in the areas of nutrition and physical activity. The hospital was collecting BMI data on fourth graders throughout our district and we got the, the data for the BMI um, for fourth grade here and it really disturbed me. 44% of my fourth graders at the time were in the 85th percentile or above which classified them as either obese or at risk of being obese. If fully implemented, local wellness policies can have a positive effect on student health. Take, for example, Stanley County Public Schools. Located northeast of Charlotte, North Carolina, this small school system boasts 24 schools. Richfield Elementary, a K-8 school with approximately 312 students, is one of those schools. What is Richfield Elementary doing? We added 60 minutes of physical activity every single school day. My lessons always incorporate some sort of movement. You know, how am I going to put 30 minutes of physical activity in my classroom when I don't have time to get through math? I don't have time to get through uh, social studies. Our teachers think outside the box. Our teachers are innovative. They're creative on these activities. It's not that you have to create a whole new schedule, a whole new timeline, you know, or extend your school day to incorporate this hour of physical activity in a day. Any increase in physical activity beyond what a child is normally doing is one step closer to that child being healthier. The partnership Richfield Elementary has with the local hospital is key in providing healthy living education to the students and faculty. They want to be in schools. They want to be a part of what's going on because 
it's, it's well care, not sick care, and that's, that's typically what, what hospitals have been providing is sick care. They, they see you whenever you get sick. What our hospital wanted to partner with us so that we can promote health and wellness and prevent people from getting sick. Why is it so important to make these changes? You know, it's not just about health. It's about academics, and it's about a whole child. And a child who's healthy, a child who eats Eats well, plays hard, is a child that's going to do better in school. It's not just teaching a child in the classroom, but what's happening in the hallway and what's happening in the gym class and what's happening with exercise and what's happening in the cafeteria and what teachers are doing. We have to look at really the entire purpose of education or the process of schooling. Uh, and when we do that, we really look at that as a whole child experience. At this school, this is the fewest amount of behavior problems I've ever had, and I, I attribute that to one of the factors as our healthy policy and the physical activities of them burning off that nervous energy. You know, we weren't just worried about academics, we were worried about the whole child. The benefits of implementing the wellness policy can be measured in a variety of ways. What we found was in every grade level we had a decrease in BMI which goes against the national average. I have noticed the health of children um, improving over the course of the two years that I've been here at Richfield. Last year, with an hour of physical activity every day, we were able to become a school of excellence as well as a school of high growth. I think that they have learned to make better choices as far as being physically active. And saw a 27% decrease in staff absence in their first year. Um, that saved our school district um, roughly $6,000 here at our school just in substitutes alone. So we know when you are more active, you feel better, and you do better. So that's something we're teaching very early on, and personally I feel like it's very critical. And what advice can be given to schools for implementing their local wellness policy? I think school districts that might want to start a program should start working with the uh, disease management and education departments at their hospital. I think the best advice for parents that are concerned about the future health of their children is to keep showing up. I would say work with their local health department, work with their hospital, have some good, uh, some basic statistics to show. Keep voice in your opinion and keep it at the forefront of the conversation. We found here was the hospital was, was a more than willing partner. They were already out into the schools through Passport and Fitness trying to be proactive. And then communicate, communicate, communicate. <laughs> Much more is needed to change the growing trend in overweight and obese children in our state. Schools need community support and involvement to ensure that every student is provided with the knowledge and opportunity to grow up into a healthy adult. And we've even had parents come in and say, this program has made a tremendous impact on my child, they're making better choices at home. So parents are extremely supportive of it. The kids loved it, absolutely loved it. They love being physically active every day. We think it's really fun and um, we like being healthy. I like recess to like play and exercise and like be active and stuff. It's a cultural change that we're trying to make and anytime you try to make that cultural change you're gonna run up against opposition. Like I said it's not the easy thing to do it's the right thing to do. A healthier and better society is within reach. For more information about how you can support your local wellness policy, visit ncactionforhealthykids.org for resources from Successful Students Eat Smart and Move More.